Okey, selamat kembali ke bahagian kedua episod keempat Fakir Fikir. Hari ini kita ada seorang tetamu yang saya rasa sangat istimewa. Saya ni daripada kecil ni memang peminat space lah. Kita ingat bila Challenger meletup. I, I remember distinctly Challenger meletup tu because that was uh, an epic moment. Of course you remember not directly because kita belum lahir masa tu when man landed on the moon and all that. And I remember macam tengok science fiction bila Mas Elon punya roket landed balik kan oh, when he sent uh, yes. Falcon Heavy tu dua ketul balik itu macam oh. is that real or is that a movie it's still you know yes. sampai sekarang when I see that footage it still looks like oh this is just crazy right yes. so for the first time we are having somebody yang indirectly involved in something that could go into space and this is to me nampak macam next frontier lah. Semua orang cakap nak pergi bulan by 2026, NASA punya target 2026 and of course Mars within the decade you know. I nak minta sikit you punya pendapat lah tentang apa yang kita boleh buat di Malaysia ni dengan the space industry. Where can we en- can we enter the space race? Are we so far behind that there's no point ke macam mana? In short answer, in short sweet answer, the answer is absolutely big bowl y e s absolutely yes we can and fundamentally hmm. the reason why is because the malaysia's geographical advantage where malaysia country ni uh, is on the, around the equator and with that advantage in terms of the rocket launching which is important to all country because that is giving access to the space we can actually reduce the amount of fuel that we need to go to the space which in turn reduces the launching cost right ha huh. So and as a reflection lah, I mean now we are having a conversation about not only the role but also the potential, the potentiality of Malaysia in mm-hmm. terms of the space race lah kan. Mm. Reflecting back when we learn about history Malaya daripada zaman dulu, Malaya ni secara semula jadi banyak advantage. Macam contoh zaman dulu, zaman uh, zaman Portugis where this yang sebutkan kedudukan Melaka yang sebut zaman Portugis oh, okay. aku tak boleh tahan lah dengan sebut zaman Portugis ni okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a little story oh. so 1981 I ikut my dad pergi Ohio taking his uh, post grad and then masuk kelas cikgu tu obviously so kita cerita tentang Malaysia lah masa tu <coughs> memang dia tak tahu Malaysia kat mana it wasn't as a joke teacher didn't know what so we had to point it out to them and then dia tanya sejarah Malaysia and sekolah gendah kita belajar 15-11 mm. I stop myself I wanted to say our history and then tell us a little bit about this and I could only remember 1511 and I felt so disgusted cannot say that my history starts at 1511 so I just said I, I can't remember I don't know I don't like to start at 1511 So that's not where our history starts. Sekarang ni kalau you tengok uh, Sungai Batu, the latest archaeological digs, huh? it could be as old as 2,000 years. It might have been at year zero dia telah ada dekat sini. So Sungai Batu is actually, kat situ banyak estate kota sawit lah. So what they found kat situ was uh, a structure bulat tu. Bulat. Besar, maybe like 20 feet across. And then kat bawah tu dia bulat bentuk macam ni tu. Semi conical macam tu. Dekat bawah tu dia ada lubang-lubang kecil banyak and there are a lot of small clay pipes it looks like what they call a tuyer t-u-y-e-r-e which is uh, like relau untuk smelting so for you to blow air in to increase the temperature to melt iron bila you tengok the documentary about the Japanese making katana mm-hmm. they will melt all this iron ore dalam bentuk empat segi dia punya empat segi tapi dekat bawah tu akan ada lubang-lubang ni where they pump a lot of air mm. and it's charcoal lah So it's not actually iron because when you're doing charcoal and air you're producing steel. This is some form of plasma converter ke apa aku tak tahulah tapi pakai charcoal and you're injecting air underneath and you're going to get really high temperature, you're going to get carbon into the iron, you're going to get steel out of it. That's how the Japanese make their katana. So clearly this is not iron production. This could well be steel production. Could be as early as 2000 years ago. So which would predate Kedah steel earlier than Damascus steel, but that's being disputed lah. So never mind. But there's, there's that. It doesn't matter lah. Even if it's 1100, 1200, this is still something significant. So our history goes quite a ways back. But okay, we can't discuss that here because we are not historians. Yeah. Eh? It's just me remembering what I read lah. So I just just have a thing about Honestly, like, I really appreciate Malaka that. Right? I really uh, appreciate that. Uh, because sometimes when it comes to learning like new knowledge and new wisdom be it like as, a, as an example history mm. we sometimes learn in an autopilot mode mm-hmm. where we just like 
get ourselves indoctrinated with whatever information that is thrown thrown out to us. I really appreciate this. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, going back. Uh, going back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Going back to the <laughs> Malaysia. Okay, oh, Malaysia zaman sekarang lah. But of course, the main point I want I wanted to share is Our like geographical. geographical is like we are a blessed country. Yes, yes, yes. And so with respect to this advantage, I genuinely believe that the potential of Malaysia as a I would say like space-faring nation, although mm-hmm. that is a big bold word to say it, mm-hmm. as a space-faring nation, we can take the advantage where Malaysia, not on the geography but also geopolitic wise, we are we are a neutral country, and with that geography neutral, combining combining with the privatization of the space industry itself, mm-hmm. where even like recently a few days ago, NASA bought a transportation service uh, in Lamentum with intuitive machine where they landed on the moon. It's like NASA buy the service. Uh, it's not like NASA is the one that built that thing, go to the moon. Mm. Combined with this privatization, mm. where it would be best working with a neutral country. So in short, this is the general direction that Malaysia needs to have. Not only needs to have, but to really emphasize with other country. And I would say that the general goal of Malaysia, I honestly believe lah, Malaysia can be the gateway to the stars. Right. Semua orang nak teringin like even like as crazy as going to the nearest solar system of Alpha Centauri, try to colonize the entire solar system. Hmm. But to go there from Earth, the gateway to the star is through Malaysia. Untuk benda-benda macam tu, kita nak pergi ke bulan dan semua ni, dia sebenarnya pada pengamatan saya lah, manusia ni dah ada teknologi tu. Tapi dia memerlukan satu pemimpin yang berwawasan untuk menjadikan cerita ni sesuatu yang exciting. For example, bila kita tengok John F Kennedy punya speech, hmm. eh, about going to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Then that means macam oh, yes. ada satu wawasan ni memerlukan uh, wawasan benda ni. Kat Malaysia sekarang ni buat masa ni mungkin tak ada orang yang nampak the potential for the country and the excitement. Apa apa area macam for example bila I tahu I nak interview you and you cakap and I was told this company is developing wireless charging technology untuk satellite. I'm thinking what what is the words make sense individually but as a sentence I don't even understand what this is all about right so I have to sit down and talk to you and then suddenly oh there's this window yang ku tak nampak pun yang ada kat situ kan so how do we get that story out how do we get more people excited about this because I think for most nation kita rasa kita tak ada capability pun langsung nak pergi because whatever satellite yang kita hantar miasap ke apa kita beli pada orang we didn't develop anything right so we have satellites yeah, nama Malaysia but it's bought from the yeah. French or whoever yeah. it is that built the satellite right? in all honesty not only you are totally right but in fact that is one of the orang kata macam niat jugalah kalau boleh because in reality how to move this is about social movement mm. of course it's not just a societal justice ke macam tu lah kan but this is also related to the menghidupkan bara api manusia kita our human spirit you are totally correct in terms of the thought process where to make this happen it's not just about apakah blueprint negara semua tak it's a figure aspect mm. there needs to be a, some sort of macam wawasan and there needs to be a face yes because after all even though like for our case we are not selling like direct to consumer we are business to business but still in the end everyone is human even mm. business point everyone is human mm. and with that respect that is why even though we are relatively of course we are still very early mm-hmm. memang kita sangat awal uh, but because of my own co-founder Matt who is in charge of marketing who is really when it comes to human aspect we take the risk and we accept this kind of interviews because why terutamanya dalam Malaysia ni orang selalu tengok macam ui dah shot lah semua tapi dah berjaya dah dah jadi jutawan contohlah dah sampai ke bulan barulah macam banyak public apa semua macam tu mm-hmm. but dia lain kalau the general public is already aware where okay for our case even when we are still early when we are still facing the challenges but we make ourselves vulnerable to the people so that people can share not only the hope but also the belief in us like to the extent where my friends aku harap engkau lan aku harap menjadi tu aku nak engkau berjaya juga mm, mm, that kind of level of emotion mm, punya support mm, mm, uh, mm. because otherwise if we don't put ourselves in this kind of uh, say camera spotlight ke apa dah berjaya dah semua orang pun macam wah like they people think that somehow we are like a uh, 
a genius where we make that happen but in reality kita pun manusia biasa je but that's yeah. the thing the story tu is important to see exactly. your struggle to share the, the the growth and development exactly what are the other areas you nampak macam you dah nampak ada satu benda yang you nak buat mm. still like kat Malaysia apa lagi yang kita yang you rasa yes. tak ada capability untuk buat yes ha. you are totally correct ha. now like Okay, personal branding ish then needs to be happen. Hmm. Sangat penting ya, jangan dah berjaya baru tu. Uh, it shows that everyone can be extraordinary. Hmm. Ordinary people can be extraordinary. Done. Hmm. Okay, apa another gap? Hmm. For the case of Malaysia, hmm. after we go to the startup world cup recently, really amazing people like not only American but also in the other world. Our own observation is that Malaysia ni banyak yang memang genius like honestly way more genius, way way more astronomically smarter than I am. I'm like I'm a I'm a happy dumb ass lah honestly mm. I'm a happy dumb ass that's how I position myself lah Malaysia ni banyak yang hebat sebenarnya but satu je apa dia they have a limiting belief dia ni Malaysia je Uh, mm. Saya tak kerja NASA Mana mm. boleh buat mm. But here's the thing First principle analysis Fundamentally Wherever you go Country, negara mana-mana pun Where it comes to Building a technology capability mm. All country Have one common Nak tahu apa dia In fact not only country Pergi mana-mana alam semesta Satu benda ni Still sama Nak tahu apa dia It's the loss of physics okay. Wherever you go Loss of physics Is still the same And so Now that information is accessible is up to like us as Malaysian actually so many smart people is the matter of taking the courage to still do it of course it's very hard even for me it's personally even not only career wise it's a huge risk for me mm-hmm. including financially mm-hmm. but i'm taking this risk and for me to take this risk i cannot have a limiting belief like alhamdulillah rezeki allah we did not expect kita boleh sampai ke projek bulan like mm. who would have thought of that because in reality pun once we break the limiting belief the notion where kita hanya orang malaysia tak ada orang nak pandang kita actually that is not even true that is not true at all otherwise how are we able to work with american companies because from their perspective not only american but Anywhere in the world, America, ke China, ke Russian, or even Japanese, they want innovation. That is key thing. Even if the innovation, the key technology come from I don't know Zimbabwe, ke apa semua. But if that can bring tangible value to their entire ecosystem, of course they want. Innovation is a word yang banyak orang guna lah. Hmm. But how you generate innovation? Because yeah. clearly some countries seem to generate more than others. Is there a secret recipe, or is it just like you say you gonna have this? Dumb belief that you boleh buat aja. For the case of Malaysia, uh. innovations is not just about technology. It can be any other fields as well. Even like dalam bidang, I don't know kesusasteraan mm-hmm. ke apa. Mm-hmm. But in the context of technology, mm. for the, for the case of Malaysia, particularly, mm. particularly, what it means to be innovating is to build things that is so different from others. What's happening in Malaysia, most of the innovations that have been made aware of, we tend to buy things from others. And we tend to do innovations where the value is very low. And of course, we can go specific in details as an example like components. What does it mean to innovate? It's not about buying component, beli pasang-pasang, it's like pasang Lego saja. Anybody can do that. Ah, Pasang Lego saja senang. But innovations, why? what would be the best example in terms of innovation, let's say in the context of semiconductor, okay, right now banyak orang globally uh, graphene, graphene semiconductor where boleh high power. You know what is the next step? The right innovation? Diamond. Diamond? That's it, just a, another form of carbon. Okay, go on. Yeah. So, the reason why diamond is important for semiconductor innovation, of course, the innovation gap research semua memang very difficult. That's the bar. That is the bar you need to have in, when it comes to innovation. It's not that desktop research, ada orang buat, okay, kita buat. Padahal kau piket je. Uh, so, the level of innovation is where, practically speaking, you have no reference to learn from. You have to think from scratch how to make it. As an example, for the diamond, why I say diamond? Because diamond, the thermal conductivity is really high, which is important for climate change when it comes to even like semiconductor for electric vehicles, even batteries. It's all about the efficiency. And now that with the advent of Gen AI, mm. where competing power, power demand is really high. Mm. So how do you stay as a civilization? Stay very efficient, tenaga-wise, electricity-wise, stay efficient, but at the same time, energy demand is so high. Mm. That's why the diamonds have come in. Diamond can handle electricity, can diamond really, really high temperature and high power. 
So that is why time is very important. That is, is the time the conductor. I mean, it's carbon. Is it a conductor? It can be used if we go down specific semiconductor as a substrate. It's not a conductor, but diamond can handle really high temperature. It can handle, uh, and because of that, you can you can pump in like power tinggi tinggi ber kilo kilo watt tinggi, but temperature too still okay. Going back to the core uh, innovation, that is the bar that you need to set. It's not just about incremental innovation where satu dunia buat graphene battery ah kita pun buatlah graphene battery tapi bagus sikit je tak you have to think radically you have to think in terms of not just what is a product that you want to build you have to think in the form of a roadmap by year 2030 what is the vision that you want to do and in order to achieve that vision what is the technical challenges that you need to solve as an example for our case for Aphelia what is our vision what is a kind of like the spacex vision of mm. multiplanetary species mm. Mm. solving the transportation our vision is same multiplanetary species juga manusia ada dekat planet uh, bulan mari and everything but unlike uh, spacex solving the transportation issue rocket for hours we are solving the energy issue energy. so and with that and then we look at okay as an example dekat bulan what is a specific um, problem what is the specific issues is a uh, electricity waktu malam tak ada so we have to solve that and also there's a temperature issue sangat suju that's where we craft what is an innovation that is needed in order to solve that and with that so many technical challenges that you need to solve and that is how you you level up your innovation game and to be specific i kept saying like the bar what is the bar of the innovation mm. if we go really specific start a practical if let's say any listener who is listening okay i want that kind of innovation but practically how do i think mm. don't do things where you can just easily replicate but rather you need to learn to build things from scratch and really really difficult things so that the main value that you learn you do something totally radically new and you have to think from scratch as an outcome innovation why if we go for what is the skills that you gain from innovating is actually this you learn how to figure out on how to figure out because sometimes if we think from scratch we don't even know how to think macam mana nak fikir macam mana nak berfikir that is the skill that is very important when it comes to innovation otherwise like space industry is the best case before space sets we have been having conventional wisdom mm -hmm. rocket is very expensive satellite very big how do we increase kind of like the impact of the space economy so that it can benefit the human kind what is the bottleneck there is the transportation so yeah. so from that transportation wise how do you solve it ideally speaking what if rocket boleh ulang alik okay what is the technical challenge you go at that kind of level of innovation and of course it, it is something that doesn't exist at all but that is the level of innovation you have to think hmm. you think from scratch macam mana rocket pergi tapi somehow masuk somehow land then how how do you think about that that is the level of innovation that malaysia needs to level up and in fact by malaysia needs to step up i believe that it is the industry leaders needs to step up because talent wise we have so many talents when it comes to uh, brain drain malaysia increased from 3.3% recently to 5.5% not good yeah. definitely not good and of course the main reason is salary gaji rendah which honestly i don't blame the government i don't blame the talent or anything it is the responsibility of the industry players here but in reality if we go like interview talk to really genius engineers malaysian who work outside they don't care about the salary of course like kalau gaji rendah they don't care but they were set after the satisfaction of exactly they want that kind of satisfaction mm -hmm. i don't want to use my <laughs> genius mind to do on mediocre projects yeah. that is the main thing yeah. for us of course we can come up with so many statistics uh, this is the root cause lah low salary apa semua but sometimes the reason is so simple is that you don't need a very complicated statistic when you mm -hmm. tengok movies about astronauts and then you realize you have to go through god knows 5 10 15 years of training really hardcore training of the best of the best in terms of your pilot engineer dan apa sebagainya and when you look at the astronaut punya salary is not big mm. Mm. NASA astronaut punya salary is not huge it's, it's comparable to like an engineer punya salary maybe a senior engineer but that's it mm. right so you wonder kenapa dia orang sanggup put in hours and hours and months and months and years and years of training I mean it requires years months of training at least for one mission right never mind the, just the, to get with an astronaut mm. but you're right the story is the, it's the story about going to space that makes them want to do it right? exactly it's that achievement exactly. of being in space I think we are lacking really good communicators and storytellers right now it's something yeah. yang 
betul betul and i'm of course i'm guilty of that that is why it is a learning process for me as well and my team as well lah. because like i honestly believe like elon is the best example in terms of not only personal branding but communicating why the emotional aspect of it and also like to make the jug like remove the juggers make it simple to mm. the layman term mm. there is also something that especially for me personally i have to reach that gap i need to improve on that and that is why of course there are some very good friends of mine even my own family members don't be too casual when talking you like you are building not only just any company it's a space industry pay rocket where there's a certain kind of formality certain kind of accountability of course certain kind of communication i try to behave myself but it's important that at least for me and also for my team as a uh, as a whole we are accessible to everyday people even my co-founder matt when he asked like uh, younger uh, younger generation do you feel intimidated when you try to talk people even like us Yes, I I feel very intimidated. Uh, so takut nak cakap. Uh, padahal kita like normal people je. So you are totally right. That is of course a a gap that I'm also working on lah. I'm a work in progress as well. Mm-hmm. As yeah. as it is right now, I nampak kita in almost all aspects of life, a big transformation is happening. And that big transformation is of course AI lah sekarang. I don't know how Malaysia see AI. Because tak banyak orang sembang sangat benda ni. But to me, dia macam Aibah. Oh. Right? It is a great equalizer. But only if you know how to swim lah. If you have a boat. Right? Because the water is rising. So, what is your advice for Malaysians in general as we are going through this civilizational level change? Apa yang anak-anak Malaysia boleh buat untuk capture this new ability? Mm. Absolutely. I would say that I highly believe that the biggest impact you can do as a younger lebih-lebih tengah muda lagi is go for deep tech deep tech startup so okay, okay. Yeah. detail so, sikit apa deep tech okay. startup tu apa maksudnya okay. so deep tech startup apa unlike say a normal startup where most of the startup is based on buat online marketplace buat app buat food delivery kind of business deep tech is a kind of startup where it's not about online marketplace it's not about app it's about technological breakthrough kenapa why, why I even touch about deep tech startup and why it is important for Malaysians two main reason lah number one gaji tinggi you want high income you need to do high value products and services how deep tech can help that deep tech is all about building high value technology but also for global issue it's like now climate change how do we solve climate change you you are not gonna solve climate change by dancing mm-hmm. tiktok you are not gonna solve i'm, I'm sorry to say that lah mm-hmm. it's kind of harsh but to really try to solve climate change fundamentally of course we need the policy makers we need to we need to have like social advocates like Greta Thunberg but fundamentally it all goes to the technical challenges how do you transition from like fossil fuels to okay electrified world even electrified world energy storage battery how do you make it sustainable because it's like it's like we are going cycle you want to get away from fossil fuel because it is limited resources and then you go to like the material for the electric uh, electric vehicle batteries is also limited resources so how do you solve this kind of issue fundamentally it's always about technical and when it comes to solving the technical we are not talking about solutions where all you do is import technology no you have to work on the R&D and that is the best way moving forward. And of course, to make that happen, please, 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 please dream big. Because sometimes like we Malaysians, even though R&D dah canggih, dah global level, but there's no element of dreaming big, bro. Of course, it can be crazy even for us. Like well, we are talking about being the TNB of the solar system. Of course, it might seem crazy, but only only among Malaysians. When we go to the US, it's like our goal is to be the energy utility of the solar system. You know what the the reactions mm. from the America? Cool. That's all. What just saying, mama? Then to you. So like, especially for younger, please work on a very deep tech kind of level but at the same time know that it would be best if you build it in, fo- in the form of a startup where you can generate high income salary at the same time please dream big don't just think about Malaysia don't just think about Southeast Asian uh, market think globally so I think that's a good place to end this conversation I have always felt the same thing that you feel that kadang-kadang kita fail to dream big we have ideas tapi kita tak nampak macam nak dream big one of the best example I can give is Proton hmm. Proton mula hidup dia lebih kurang sama dengan Hyundai Kia oh, Hyundai okay. Kia maybe 
five, six, seven years before that lah in the late seventies. By the uh, mid eighties, you know, sama sama baru lah. But Hyundai Kia dream about conquering the world. They failed badly. The first cars they exported to the US were the Hyundai Stella dengan Hyundai Pony. Horrible, horrible cars. They were so bad, so bad. Now this is not like me saying it's bad. It was so bad that Hyundai had to pull out of the US market because the image was so bad. And it wasn't until late nineties, early two thousand. But what had happened in the intervening years is the Koreans develop a global view, a worldview of how they want to conquer the world. And I had first-hand experience dengan benda ni. Bila kita pergi ke Korea untuk Hyundai Kia, dia panggil Vision 21 punya presentation. This is 1997, 96 macam tu. So at that point in time, 98 lah, after 98, sorry, it's after 98. So it's after the penyangak ke uh, mata wang serang. Ya. Yeah. And they lost many companies. They lost uh, LG Automotive. They lost Samsung Automotive. LG went to GM. Samsung went to Renault. And L and and a few others. They were to talk us. And they they were in a bad shape. But after that, they decided that they were going to capture the world. So Vision 21. They wanted to the World Cup year 2000 and all that. So it's part of the thing branding. It wasn't like suddenly, but it was like part. World Cup bola. Ah, uh, World Cup can Japan Korea can they had can partnership oh, right? It's yeah. year 2000 right? So that was yes. part of the entire build up. They had a the big plan for it. We had uh, Formula One, but we didn't have anything to write on it. So what they did was, so 1998, 1999, they said, Hyundai Kia, when you combine, they are maybe number 10. But they said they're going to become number five in the world, fifth biggest car company uh, in 10 years time. So that means they would have to step over kepala Honda, kepala Fiat, kepala all these other big car companies, you know, in order to get there. So kita tengok macam dia, betul ke dia ni kan? Ah? To step over PSA, Renault, Volvo, all these other, Mitsubishi, Nissan, nak duduk nombor lima. So thinking this is something else, huh? this is betul ke macam tu. Then what I noticed was from that trip tu, is that I began to see that as a country, they had developed this global dream. So one of the first way they on develop their own punya brand image is by exporting their punya telemovies. Mm. Right, the soap opera, winter sonata, this, that and the other. So they exported their culture, which is what the Japanese did also. The Japanese also exported their culture, manga, their, their yeah. punya, anime. Right? anime. Yeah. They, they exported their punya culture, their punya food and everything. And that's why you notice now, 20 years later, you see a lot of Korean food, uh, Korean drama, Korean movies. Yeah. It is not uh, without a plan. You need to project yourself as something desirable and then everything else will follow. And at the same time, I know that the cars that they were producing that day and that they were showing off to us, they bought the big kilang to your R&D. So this has been all been going on. But what they didn't have was a vision of, of design. They only designed that chanty. The engineering was already there, right? So in 1998, when they showed us the cars, the cars already had a big jump in terms of the quality. However, it was still ugly, big ugly, right? So therefore, you couldn't see the quality. But what they had, had done at that point in time is they had taken all these senior engineers and senior designers from Europe, uh, notably Volkswagen Group, Peter Schreier, to become the head of design. So I, when I came back, I said to my friends, said, said, they've improved the quality, but the cars are still ugly, so you will not notice it. It's because it's like when you have two person, one good looking, one not good looking, the one good looking, will you'll see the, the positive quality. So the next time they came out with a car, Kia Forte, and it was a good looking car, and you, they noticed, I told you, the quality was already there, but they didn't notice it. So they already had a, a game plan for global capturing the global market and that's what we don't have right now yet right? we still feel like our culture is somehow inferior oh, yes. Huh? Yes. we don't even want to talk about our food whereas well, you see how the Koreans and the Japanese have made their food into you know or cuisine, you know, mm. lifted the quality and the level yes. of the food, the amount of innovation, some things you think, like, apa bangang sangat dia punya sandwich, macam ni, but, uh -uh. right, <laughs> but it is something, eh, sedap pula, eh, they try, just try anything, sometimes it's a small step, sometimes it's a huge step, this is how I feel that, why I, I ask you about, and how do you get them motivated, because the story is the most important thing, without the story, then there's nothing, the betul, most betul. important a role of a leader, whether the country or in the technology or in a company, is to tell a really good story, to convince everybody to follow them, otherwise, you don't know, exactly. you, you don't have to be the smartest person, you just have to have vision, eh? exactly. this exactly. is where, why I'm happy to talk to you 
I'm happy to Likewise. know somebody who's doing something. I have even I haven't the slightest clue that it, it was even you know a thing for you to worry about solving the energy problem on the moon. Fantastic! Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope we can meet up again after May when you've done your your prototype testing in 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 Sirim and see how it goes. Inshallah. Yeah. Okay, guys. That I think this is I'm I'm really happy about this episode and we kita dapat sembang dengan somebody yang dia punya headspace dia lain untuk kita lah langsung lah aku tak pernah terfikir pun and dia ada kat situ so I think it's important that kita cuba jana inspiration kalau kita tengok all the most successful companies all the most successful countries they all sebenarnya built on inspiration daripada inspiration tu lah orang akan rasa it's worth it to put in blood sweat and tears betul, to come betul. up with innovation and this is one of the things yang kita cuba nak achieve dengan fakih fikir ni is cari idea-idea yang betul-betul lain langsung daripada yang kita pernah dengar so that will inspire you guys okay sampai situ je video kita kali ni tolong tekan butang like kongsi dengan kawan-kawan and before we go you want to say anything in closing if there is one thing the audience dengar kalau so one thing saja from our conversation I would like to share it in the form of a story ya. Mm. My own story. Mm. Lepas habis degree hantar thesis final project kawan-kawan semua pergi interview kerja saya terus pitch dekat investor. Tapi the main thing I want to share is of course my family suruh pergi juga job interview. Pergilah job fair pegang resume. Pada masa tu honestly lah satu benda je in my mind dekat Mid Valley. Dekat Mid Valley atas tu. Mm. Kat biasa ada exhibition center. Exhibition center ha. sana. Satu benda je pegang resume tengok semua orang tengah macam gagak cakap dengan orang nak interview banyak company semua ni in my mind in my heart satu benda je nak tahu apa benda je I don't want this tahu kenapa I don't want this there is not one single company that is inspiring <laughs> honestly lah memang tak ada yang Honestly, my in my mind, even if I want to work in a particular company, I want to work in a company where I can design something yang menggila betul. Kami semua nak ada. So that's why in my mind, pun, I tak terfikir kawan lain semua oh nak kerja dekat Intel sebab salary dia lagi tinggi. In my mind, salary tu, I tak tak fikir. I just want to work on something that is damnly inspiring. And that story is where I hope that insyaallah melalui Afilia, hopefully we can be that company for Malaysia. Not only for Malaysians but also for anyone around the world. They say that I want to work in Malaysia because I want to work for Afilia. Provide energy for the moon, Mars and beyond. And that is our why. Excellent. Uh, fantastic closing. So we'll wait for the next episode. Kau pun tak tahu siapa kita nak interview lepas ni. Somebody interested. Jumpa kita.